dozens of terrorists, including foreigners, and destroy their weapons in Al-Qunaytira and Idlib. The Iraqi army foils an ISIL attack on BG oil refinery, killing 66 terrorists. At least 20 civilians were killed in Yemen following Saudi airstrikes in a number of cities. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Yerado Krikorian from the News Center in Damascus. We start our news with the latest developments on the ground. An armed attack launched by a Nostra terrorist in eastern Astamadaniya village has been foiled and terrorist hideouts destroyed by the Syrian Arab army in Al Qunaytira suburb. A military source said the Syrian Arab army unit clashed with terrorists from Jabhat al Nusra after detecting the movements from Al Ajraf village in the direction of eastern Asamadaniya, killing and wounding many of them and destroying their equipment. The source added that Syrian Arab army units also eliminated several armed men and destroyed their weapons and ammunition in Rasma Shula and Al Hamidiya west of Al Qunaytira. The military source referred to a number of gunmen who had been killed or wounded and their clashes and their cachets destroyed in Umbatina in Al Qunaytira eastern suburb. In Idlib, Syrian Arab army units have destroyed terrorist hideouts and left scores of terrorists either killed or wounded, including Arab nationals. The Syrian Arab army had tightened full control over Nahliya, southwest of Idlib, after retaking Kafar Najd and eliminating the last terrorist gatherings there. Welcome back. Iraqi troops today thwarted an attack launched by ISIL terrorists on BG oil refinery in the governorate of Salah al-Din, inflicting on them heavy losses in men and material. The officer in charge of protecting the refinery said the defense force has foiled the largest attack launched by Daesh, which used booby-trapped cars, motor guns, and suicide bombers, but the Iraqi Air Force and the Protection Guards have been able to eliminate 66 terrorists and destroy seven trapped vehicles before they reached their destination, forcing other terrorists to flee. An ISIL member, an Australian in charge of communication, and three of his assistants have also been killed in an ambush in Takrit, the center of Salah al-Din governorate. Twelve ISIL terrorists were moreover killed, including one of their leaders, when their positions were targeted north of Mosul. In Yemen, 20 people were killed and dozens were wounded following Saudi airstrikes in Sada and Hajjah. Meanwhile, clashes continued between the people's communities and the forces loyal to Abd Rabbo Mansour Hadi in different parts of Taiz. The city of Lahaj also witnessed fierce clashes between the Yemeni army and gunmen in the Tawahi neighborhood in Aden. The Saudi-American aggression caused a humanitarian catastrophe as many hospitals were shelled and badly damaged. Iranian Assistant Foreign Minister for Arab and African Affairs, Hussein Amir Abdullahian, has warned of a humanitarian disaster in Yemen due to the Saudi-led airstrikes on the country. During a telephone conversation with UN Secretary General for Humanitarian Affairs, Valeri Amos, Abdullahian called for urgent humanitarian aid for the Yemeni people, affirming that Iran has done its best to deliver medical and food assistance to Yemen. Saudi Arabia, however, has not cooperated in this respect and continued the shelling operations, which would ultimately lead to a humanitarian catastrophe. On her part, Amos described the humanitarian situation in Yemen as unfortunate, pointing out that the military strikes obstruct any access to assistance by the Yemeni people. Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov renewed his country's attitude, which rejects the deteriorating situation in Yemen, pointing out that Washington's support for the Saudi military intervention raises many questions. In a speech he delivered before the fourth conference for international security in Moscow, Lavrov pointed out that Washington uses double standards towards the situation in Yemen, adding the U.S. support for Saudi campaign in support of the former fugitive president can raise many questions, especially when we take into consideration that the American administration supported the military, Q 
coup in the Ukraine. Within the same context, Deputy Foreign Minister Mikhail Bogdanov stressed that Russia's attitude towards the situation in Yemen is based upon firm principles to find political solutions to the crisis, pointing out that Russia is making contacts with its Arab and Iranian partners in order to find a political solution. In occupied Palestine, Israeli settlers broke into Al-Aqsa Mosque under the protection of occupied troops as Israeli soldiers conducted a wide-scale arrest campaign in the West Bank, detaining 13 Palestinians in Ramallah, al bire and Hebron. The Israeli occupation troops ransacked Palestinian houses and set barricades at the entrances of many towns and villages. Finally, in and now local news, the Syrian National Symphony Orchestra presented a concert of classical music conducted by the maestro Misak Bagudarian at Al Assad House for Culture and Art in Damascus on the occasion of Independence Day. The performance was attended by a large number of audience and music fans. The Syrian National Symphony Orchestra was established by musician Salhil Wadi after establishing the Higher Institute for Music in Syria. The Syrian National Symphony Orchestra represented Syria in different national and international festivals and was highly praised for its creative performances. The Syrian National Symphony Orchestra is working his normal season starting from September until July and we have our regular concerts at Damascus Opera House Today, tonight we had a concert with Brahms Academic Overture and the Beethoven Third Symphony, the Eroica. As we are now going to the Syrian Independence Day, the Syrian National Day, so it's for our Syria, for our beloved Syria, so we are offering this heroism, this Eroica for Syria. With this, we conclude our news for today. Thank you for watching. For more details about Syria.